And up next, uh, we're having Eric Pinos, the president of Blockchain Education Network, a seven year global network of blockchain clubs, students, professors, and alumni. Eric is also the America's ecosystem lead at Ontology, a high performance public blockchain specializing in decentralized identity and data. At Ontology, Eric is an advisor to the Wing Finance Project. Eric has a bachelor's in management from MIT, where he was the president of the MIT Bitcoin Club and the researcher at the MIT DCI. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Eric. So welcome, guys. Uh, my name is Eric, and thank you for that intro. So as Daniel mentioned, I'm the president of the Blockchain Education Network, which is a seven-year network of blockchain clubs and students. Um, so the talk is about blockchain and academia to really give an understanding and an overview of how blockchain is being taught at schools and universities. And if you're a company, uh, what kinds of engagement you can do with students to help promote this mission of blockchain education on campuses. And if you're a student, you know how you can get involved as a student with teaching blockchain on your own campus. Um, so first, you know the most the thing that everyone thinks of blockchain courses, right? Like how is blockchain courses being integrated into classes? So there was a really great study put, published by uh, Coin Coinbase back in 2019 that kind of did an analysis of how the blockchain space has been changing. Um, and I can say that from my experience. So like I got into Bitcoin in 2014 when I was an undergraduate at MIT, they did the, the MIT Bitcoin club did the MIT Bitcoin airdrop. So that was $1,000 worth. No, it was a hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin airdropped to every MIT student and Bitcoin. And I love telling the story because Bitcoin was uh, $200 at the time. So each MIT student got half a Bitcoin and I still have that transaction in my Coinbase account. Like, have 0.5 BTC from MIT Bitcoin Club. Um, you're right. So, like, you know, if you held that until today, that's thirty thousand dollars that every single student got airdropped. Um, so pretty wild, pretty crazy. But back then, there was no classes. Like everything was super informal. I had to join the MIT Bitcoin Club to learn about Bitcoin. Uh, you know, in other campuses, it was similar. Like there were a lot of student-run blockchain clubs popping up, but there weren't blockchain classes. So we can see now that it's kind of changed. Uh, by 2019, 18% of students have reported taking some kind of crypto course. Uh, 40, 41 of the top 50 universities, according to Coinbase's rankings, have a student-run club. So it's a mix of like student-run education and a mix of uh, like classes right, in class-run education. And hey, Eric, uh, sorry. Also, yes, yeah, we're wondering if you could minimize that real quick because that it's blocking the slides. This thing? Yes. Oh, yeah, I was blocking it for me too. I don't know how to. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. Okay. All right. Yeah. So uh, also from 2018 to 2019, right, the demand has been going up for having more. I could put it where my face is here. Yeah. So there's been more interest and demand in learning about cryptocurrencies as well. Um, you know, with the increase of classes, there's more universities teaching about blockchain. And it's kind of a mix between CS-based classes versus business-based classes. So another thing about blockchain is that we've seen that there's different, usually it's different departments that can teach it. So we've had a lot of computer science departments start teaching blockchain classes. We've also had a lot of business schools start teaching classes. I know that MIT, for example, uh, we've had instances of both. We've had both uh, business-focused blockchain classes being taught by the Sloan School, and we've had more tech-focused classes taught either by the MIT DCI, the Digital Currency Initiative, or by the Core 6 Department, which is our Electrical Engineering and Computer Science Department. Um, and from Coinbase's rankings, the, the top leaders in crypto education, so these are universities that have taught a class, so like Cornell, MIT, NYU, Stanford. Uh, so it is a big focus in the US, but we also have some international universities that have started to teach about blockchain as well. Um, and so some like final thoughts about like the courses. I think what we've seen is that courses are very difficult to integrate into campuses. I mean, you look at right now it's 2019 or it's 2021 now, and it's been slowly happening, but it hasn't like fully been um, adopted yet, right? The, these universities are still very slow to integrate classes on campuses, especially accredited courses. So at the Blockchain Education Network, we've been working with a lot of universities to try to get these accredited universe, these accredited courses installed. We're having some success now, but this is success now after like seven years of pitching university administrations, right, to, to get this stuff installed. So it's happening now. And so I think within the next 
you know, four or five years, I will see a lot more courses being taught from all different kinds of disciplines um, about blockchain. And I think we'll see a lot more like formally educated blockchain developers, blockchain economists, cryptocurrency, you know, designers and, and researchers. So I think it's very exciting that the universities are starting to catch on and start hosting these, these, um, these accredited courses. But also I wanna talk about extracurricular activities because I think that stuff that's student run has always moved a lot faster than stuff that's like faculty run. And the biggest case in point is the blockchain clubs. So these are some blockchain clubs that are part of the Ben network. Um, and as you can see, they all vary in, in size and shape and, and uh, history. So MIT Bitcoin club, blockchain at Berkeley, Badger blockchain, those are all like really old clubs, but we have a ton of new clubs. So like Bentley and um, blockchain at Mason, like even at this point, like those are also old. Like I think this, uh, this boom really started in 2018 where the MIT Bitcoin Club and the Wellesley Bitcoin Club were really the only two Bitcoin clubs in Boston from like 2014 to 2017. And actually the Wellesley Bitcoin Club was shut down by the school. So, you know, these, these clubs faced a lot of, of issues on their campuses from, and a lot of pushback from administration that didn't want Bitcoin being taught on the campuses. So a lot of them were hindered by the school administrations, but you know, all the clubs powered through. And in 2018, there were so many new blockchain clubs in Boston that popped up. Boston College, Tufts, Boston University, Harvard. Harvard had a couple because there was the grad school of education. There was the business school. There was the Kennedy School, the law school, and the undergrad school. They each had their own blockchain club. Um, Emerson, Suffolk, they all had blockchain clubs. And what we've seen is that, you know, they're still around. So that's really exciting to see because when you have a blockchain club, you have students that run it, and it can be difficult for students because uh, if it's a student, right, they have classes and they have commitments, and then they might be there might be a different president next year, or what happens when they graduate if they bring someone new. So this is something that Ben has helped a lot with, is kind of helping clubs stay alive and to pass on the knowledge from one president to the next president and to just keep the clubs going. So I'm very excited to say that, like, you know, most of these clubs are still active, and now that there's, like, another especially through the bear market where a lot of people get discouraged. Now that there were kind of in another bull market, what we've seen is a lot of new clubs popping up as well that have been reaching out to us and say, hey, we wanna start a club at our university. How do we do that? So we've been helping a lot more clubs get set up. And we really like the clubs because the clubs host events, the clubs do their own education, they teach students, they, they you know, host activities. Um, and there's a lot of exciting stuff that clubs can get involved in doing. So we'll get into some of those. Um, so as mentioned, right, like, these clubs have been instrumental in getting blockchain adoption on campuses because these student run clubs are the ones that do all sorts of things. So they do the, the job fairs, they connect students to companies and get them internships. They do all these workshops. You know, a lot of times blockchain companies in the space have ambassador programs or like community programs. And since these, in the blockchain space, companies are very, um, like they, the aim is to be decentralized. So it's very much grassroots. It's like, hey, let's get campus ambassadors. Let's get community leaders from the community. Let's get community admins. So interestingly, right, there's a lot of opportunities for students to be involved, more so than in other industries where things are very closed off and you can't do something with a company unless you officially work there. In the blockchain space, there's tons of ways to get involved with a company without needing to work there. Um, online, there's a lot of workshops and the courses which we covered in the past. And then there's also a lot of crypto native opportunities with airdrops, nodes, and community rewards. So a bit more about the offline workshops. Um, you know, this, this was a big part of Ben and a lot of a part of our clubs before uh, COVID hit and most of the stuff had to go online. But what was really effective about offline workshops, FaceTime, you can answer questions, you can bring in guest speakers and the guest speaker project. Uh, and there's networking has been the most invaluable. Like most of the jobs that we've seen students get has been because uh, of the networking they've been able to do at a, at a networking event. Um, but the cons, right? So the cons are that it's costly, there's, you know, the, the traveling and it's difficult to scale. So like, yeah, when COVID hit, we had to like switch up a lot and the clubs had to switch up a lot of like the ways that they would do things. Um, another thing is the campus ambassador, as mentioned earlier, a lot of companies have been creating opportunities for students in their 
And this is a very big industry for that type of engagement because the companies are a lot more open to student part of developer community programs, as opposed to other industries where you can only work with a company if you officially have a job there. Um, companies have reported that it's difficult for them to find the students. Uh, and so this is something that we help with is like finding students to be those campus ambassadors, finding students to help with the company, create lessons, create developer tutorials and kind of get involved. Um, one of my favorite things is education and outside of, you know, classroom. This, there's a whole trend in the industry is moving in general towards MOOCs and towards extracurricular activities, extracurricular boot camps. Uh, you can get an education now go to a university. And in many cases, a lot of students supplement their education with boot camps, like coding boot camps or like things outside of, of the official classroom experience. So this is something that a lot of clubs have been involved in is in creating lessons and creating videos. You know, we have our own platform called Ben Learn, but there's different uh, resources on the for learning about blockchain directly from, you know, the speakers and the, the authors. I think that it's a very important trend that universities are uh, getting official blockchain classes installed on campuses, like accredited courses. That's not the most important thing. And it's also not the most necessary thing because through the clubs and the students and the energy and the demand from the students, they're going and they're seeking out this, this information anyway. So they're going on Udemy and taking the blockchain courses. They're going on our platform and taking the blockchain courses. They will get that knowledge and they will get that curriculum, whether or not the school provides it. So I think that's very important for the transition of how the world is changing and kind of moving away from like traditional four-year universities and more towards this, uh, this, you know, anything that you would want to learn is online available for free that you can go and learn for that. And blockchain is lends itself very nicely to this because blockchain is something that schools have been very slow to adopt, but has has become very, very high demand. Um, so, you know, it, there's been a lot of MOOCs popping up about blockchain and a lot of online courses about blockchain. And so I can't speak to the quality of all of them, but I can definitely say that like, you know, our students, there's a lot of demand for it. And that content is all available online for free, like right now. So anyone that wants to learn about blockchain has the opportunity to do so. And something else that we've been trying to do a lot as Ben is focus on translating content. So there's a lot of international universities as well that also want to learn about blockchain. And it's a good volunteering opportunity for students to get involved in translating, especially in languages that there aren't that many translations in already. And it's also great for the clubs and for the schools because now there's more content available in other languages. So it's a very positive feedback loop. I think that the, the online material in all of these online courses are going to outpace the growth of, of universities and like courses at universities. Um, now for some of the more creative things that clubs have done for student engagement on campuses, there's been airdrops. So as mentioned, you know, I got involved through an airdrop. So I, I definitely believe in the importance of doing things like airdrops on campuses. Most students that have gotten involved have gotten involved because they got, got some Bitcoin for free or they got something for free and then they went to go check out their club. Um, so clubs that do airdrops or universities, you know, communities that do airdrops. Even when you look at this MIT Bitcoin Expo and anyone that attends the expo uh, or goes and talks to the sponsors, they get a POAP token, right? So like giving students their first badge or NFT or crypto gets them in the door to like want to go in and learn more. So that's been a very, very strong engagement metric that we've seen clubs and students and professors and community leaders and event organizers use to get that engagement is doing these kinds of airdrops. Another thing we've seen a lot of some groups do is running nodes. And so running nodes and organizing DAOs. So this is very unique to the blockchain space is this idea of let's run a node for this project and then, I mean, one, you can earn money that way, but more importantly, like you get the experience of being a part and being part of the contributing to the economic security of it. So like, you know, we would run a Bitcoin miner when we kind of first started out. Um, you know, there's a lot of now I think there's a big demand now that ETH2 or at least a version of ETH2 is out and you can already start like staking and delegating for ETH2 nodes. There's been a big demand for blockchain clubs to get involved as ETH2 validators and become ETH2 validators. So, you know, clubs have been mining for like a long time. I think that one of the issues with that is that like it uses the school's electricity. So a lot of those were shut down because the schools weren't okay with it. 
But I think now with being validators and being nodes and kind of verifying blocks in, in proof of stake uh, types of blockchains, that's gotten the opportunity for a lot more students to get involved and a lot more clubs to get involved than previously. The other kind is getting involved in DAO governance. So this is relatively new and I think it's the most interesting thing. So we just started a meta delegate for Uniswap. Um, this is something we announced. We got a grant from Uniswap to do. And the idea behind it is let's get students involved in DAOs. Let's get students involved in governance and debating and voting. So we have a meta delegate where people can delegate voting power to our delegate. Uh, you know, the uni token represents voting power in, in the proposals in the Uniswap network. Um, and then we do a vote between the university chapters to get them involved. Um, this kind of stems from the idea that like a lot of these, we've seen a lot of clubs start popping up and becoming delegates for different projects. For example, Harvard is a delegate for Uniswap. So the Harvard Law School Blockchain and Finance Initiative they're a delegate for Uniswap and uh, Berkeley is a delegate for Compound. They also run other delegates like Berkeley is also a delegate for Uniswap and you know they, they all have like a lot of delegates going on. Um, and this is the most unique opportunity that we've seen thus far for students to get involved because you're getting involved in actually you know voting on things that will change the protocol and some of the you know these protocols are managing like billions of dollars of crypto assets now. So getting involved in voting and having that kind of power as a student, having like your voice being heard that much as a student is an incredible opportunity that clubs can offer their students right now. Um, and so the, well, the shortcoming that we've identified is that it is kind of intense to run, right? Because there's a lot of requirements. There's a lot of knowledge that's needed, experience. How do you host these events? How do you do these round tables? How do you do these debates? Um, so kind of where we came in is that's kind of why we started like this meta delegate is like, well, instead of having it done like individually between universities, let's have a big intercollegiate round table where the universities can come together and then discuss and then vote. And this would just be, it would still just be like a training wheel because we would hope and our aim is to have other universities come in, do the meta delegate for a bit and then spin out into their own delegate. So then they would become like Harvard or Berkeley that they have their own node. So we're kind of helping younger universities and smaller blockchain clubs get to that level where they can run their own delegate, because that would be the ultimate goal is like having every university running their own delegate and getting to that point. Um, but I think that, you know, the, the realistically, it's very difficult to go from nothing to, to running a full delegate like Berkeley and Harvard can do it because they've been running for a long, long time. Um, and so where we are trying to help is we're trying to help with clubs that want to get started in DAOs and getting them from, you know, not knowing anything about it. Like some of the clubs that we had to teach, we hosted an event for like the Uniswap uh, governance call. And first we had a lot of clubs from Turkey. So we did the second half of the event in Turkish so that our universities in Turkey would understand. But we also found out that we had to teach clubs what DAOs even were. So like even a blockchain club can be very, very new and new enough that most of their students don't have MetaMask installed, they don't have crypto wallets, they don't even know what DAOs are. So there's a very big educational gap um, that we need to we need to help like students cross the chasm there to get to the point where they're able to start their own delegates and participate in governance and voting as you see Harvard and Berkeley here. So that's something that we're really excited about. And I think that, you know, all of us as like an industry, we have to think about how do we educate the world about these new concepts like DAOs and DeFi and, and NFTs. Like these are all words that don't mean anything to like the majority of people, even like fungible and fiat, like they don't, the world doesn't talk in this language. And so if we really want to have like blockchain adoption, we either need to get rid of those terms, which I don't think is going to happen, or we need to educate people about those terms, or we abstract it away so that people don't even interact with those terms, right? Like people are just interacting with good products and services. Um, so I think that that's what we need to do, the abstraction for like the products, but in terms of academia, I mean, these are the, these are the young people that are going to be building this future. So we need to teach them about these concepts. We need to teach them the ins and outs and everything that we know about them so that they can produce research. They can, they can get involved in projects, start new projects, get involved in existing ones and help keep building out the future. Uh, so that, that covers it for the presentation. Uh, I went over a lot of things and, you know, I want to make this helpful to the people in the audience. So I don't know if I can do question and answer.
switch to that. Hey, Eric. Uh, so we're actually, um, we actually uh, don't have any questions at the moment. Um, but uh, kind of like what you have um, for everyone out there, if you need to reach out to Eric, you can always tweet at him at Eric Pinos um, or through, uh, you know, blockchain education. Uh, thank you so much, Eric. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I was going want you to reach out if, if you're sitting in Latin America or in Africa. So those two regions are very important to us right now. We've been hosting a lot of events in Africa uh, for Ben Africa, Blockchain Education Network Africa at different universities. So, uh, you know, universities in Ghana, universities in Nigeria, and we've been doing a lot of stuff in Latin America as well. And so those the students there need a lot of support and, and content and engagement and resources and jobs. So if you're excited about that, like, please reach out. Awesome. Thank you so much, Eric. Really appreciate your talk. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. And coming up, we're going to have uh, uh, another talk. But in the meantime, if you guys want to continue maybe uh, networking with people through Discord or through GatherTown, or if you want to continue supporting the MIT Bitcoin Club by producing some merch, um, you can do that all through the links in our website. Uh, and we'll be back shortly.